A little boy climbed an apple tree. He stole an apple, then two, then three. And when he started to climb back down, he slipped and he landed on the ground. Up jumped the devil. Up jumped the devil. And every time he turned around, up jumped the devil and the white knight down. Good morning, America, the rest of the world. Xander J. Hobson here, stand-up comedian and entertainer, director and producer of boxing documentaries, and internet troll to those who need internet trolling. This here is another episode of The Devil's Advocate, brought to you by the Brilliant Artist Movement. Folks are trying to build a platform, so please subscribe, like this video, share it, and please, by all means, leave a comment in the comment section, because I look forward to uh, reading your comments and um, getting feedback on the videos that I do, as well as uh, chatting back and forth with you all. Um, hopefully you say something nice, but if you feel the need to say something nasty, I encourage you to do so. But just know, if you get out of pocket in my comment section, I'm going to ruin your day. I'm the troll's troll, and trolling me will not be tolerated. Uh, before we go any farther, I want to wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving. Um, hopefully you're safe and you're with loved ones. Uh, but with that said, uh, I want to touch on the subject of Alpo Martinez and Kevin Samuels, as well as guys like them. Folks, the only thing the hustler has on L7 is the hustler is willing to live fast and die young. Now, in case you're unaware of what that cliche means, basically it means the hustler isn't afraid to take risk. Uh, most of the times when people are living in the fast lane and out in the street, they say all kind of dumb shit like that. Live fast, die young, and have a really beautiful corpse. When I was out in the street showing my ass, I used to tell myself foolish shit like, I see you guys in hell, or do you want to live forever? Now, the reason why hustlers tell themselves all kind of dumb shit like that is because the hustlers know that they are literally throwing rocks at the penitentiary and the graveyard. Now, if we take the graveyard off the table because anyone can find themselves dying an untimely death, although we must admit there are those who do things that increase the odds of dying an untimely death. But again, if we take the uh, penitentiary off, uh, excuse me, if we take, if we take death off the table and it leaves us with just the penitentiary, again, hustlers literally throw rocks at the penitentiary from the very moment they make a conscious decision to live outside the law. Well, the L7 doesn't do that because if you're an L7, basically you understand that there are certain things that comes, there are certain things that you get into that come with the penitentiary. And if you don't want anything to do with the penitentiary, you just make a conscious decision not to do these things that will get you sent to the penitentiary. Now, hustlers or street guys or criminals, they don't want to go to the penitentiary. This is why when they commit a crime, they run. But even more so, this is why when some hustlers or criminals commit crimes, they snitch. Now, I'm not here to come down on nobody about snitching or anything like that. I'm just here to distinguish the difference between hustlers and L7s and to disabuse those of you of that notion who feel as though that hustlers are somehow on a higher level in society than the L7s. Another thing, when hustlers make a conscious decision to engage in criminal activities, they also put the lives of their loved ones in danger. Any of you who follow uh, these street chronicles or this hood news, you guys know the story of Rich Porter getting his little brother kidnapped by his own uncle, and there are countless other stories about kidnappings and people getting hurt and killed 
all because their loved one engaged in criminal activities. Well, the L7 or the square, they don't subject themselves to these kind of dangers because the L7s or the squares, they recognize early on that that is a lifestyle that I want nothing to do with. Um, often enough, people tend to think that just because a guy is a square, that he's somehow lacking in masculinity, which is the farthest from the truth, because a square will kill you just as quick as a hustler will kill you. It's just that the square is more conscious of the consequences of killing someone. Uh, the reason why you have guys like Alpo or Rich Porter sitting in jail forever is because they didn't think twice about killing people. But realistically, it wasn't that they didn't think twice about killing people. They didn't think about the consequences of killing someone. Anyone can kill anyone. You know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't require any specific skill to be a killer, but it does require a person to be conscious of the consequences of your action. Why do you think squares don't just kill people randomly? Because the squares understand that there are consequences for your actions. Now, guys like Alpo Martinez, uh, Big Meech, uh, Free Ray Ricky, and a whole bunch of these other guys, these guys made major, major money in the drug trade. These guys were super, super, super rich. But the flip side to these guys being super, super rich, these guys found themselves in jail for a substantial amount of time. Uh, I'm not really sure how old Alpo was when he went to jail. I believe he was maybe no older than 25 years old. But Alpo found himself having to do 25 years in jail. Now, I can't speak for any of you guys. There's no way on God's green earth would I go to jail for any amount of money. Now, you got guys like Freeway Ricky. Um, from what I gather, Freeway Ricky is in the cannabis business. And I'm sure he's doing quite well right now because he made a lot of money selling drugs for the CIA. But nevertheless, Freeway Ricky gave up more than 20 years of his life or 20 years of his life. I mean, again, I mean, if, if that's cool, I'd rather be corny. Um, Big Meech. Big Meech uh, was one of these guys that lasted for a long time. Uh, I think when Big Meech finally went to jail, he was maybe like about 39 or 40. So he had a, a nice long run. But again... Big Meech has been in jail since 2008, and when he gets out of jail, uh, he's scheduled to get out in two, in 2028. 20, Big Meech will spend 20 years of his life in jail, and when he gets out, he'll be about 6, 59 or 60 years old. Now again, Big Meech made a whole lot of money, and I'm sure when Big Meech gets out, uh, he's going to be doing quite well. But again, if someone asks me, say, listen, guy. Uh, we want to send you to jail at 40 years old and when you come out of jail you're going to be 60 but you're going to be a millionaire um, I think I'll pass um, I've been having a lot of fun since the age of 40 and I don't think I would want to spend a moment of my life sitting in jail even if there was a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow so uh, with that said right, I want to get ready to wrap this video up and I want to wrap this video up by saying we spent a considerable amount of time talking about niggas like Alpo Martinez, Big Meech, and the like. And um, what I want to do, I want to dedicate this latter part of this video to brothers who were locked and caught, like Kevin Samuels, Dr. Umar Johnson, lead attorney, etc. Um, I was one of these guys. I straddled the line between the squares and the hustlers. And if I could be honest, I think I identify more with the squares than I did with the hustlers because most of the hustlers that I knew, we were all putting on airs and fronting for each other. Whereas the squares, they were pretty much just being themselves. Um, I had buddies, got friends like my buddy Nicholas Brown and my other buddy Wendell. 
these dudes with some straight up and down goody two shoe ass cats. And how about now in 2021, Nicholas Brown is a high ranking police officer in the Philadelphia Police Department, and Wendell was a, a deputy police commissioner. So again, early on in life, these guys were being they self. They were goody two shoe ass dudes. Uh, Another one of my buddies, my buddy Randy Robinson. Randy Robinson, he was always a spiffy, uh, political, diplomatic type guy. How about my man Randy Robinson is like one of these political influencer type guys. Same thing with my buddy John McDaniels. You know, these guys were always goody two shoe, straight and narrow type guys, but they was good dudes. And often enough, when it came to my street friends and my square friends, the square guys were the guys who gave me job references, who gave me leads on contracts and plugged me into all type of things that could benefit me financially as well as spiritually and intellectually. Um, my street friends, you know, I couldn't get no no uh, job references for them guys. I mean, them guys would give me some coke if I wanted to sell it, or they'd give me a pistol if uh, I wanted to shoot somebody. Hell, if I wanted somebody killed, them jokers would kill somebody for me. But again, once I made a conscious decision to step away from that life, I couldn't, there was nothing that my guys from the street could do for me except tell me what time it was and point me towards something positive. So, as I get ready to wrap this thing up, I just want to say this, folks. Uh, life is not a 100-yard dash, nor is it a 1,600-meter sprint. Life is a marathon. And guys like Kevin Samuels and Dr. Umar Johnson and the lead attorney, like them or not, they understand this. And they have been very successful with living life one day at a time and paying their dues and getting all they can get out of life. Hey, guys like Alpo Martinez and Big Meech, they might be some really, really cool guys on a personal level if you don't have to deal with them in the lane that they operate in. But at the end of the day, these dudes are criminals and they live a dangerous lifestyle. And they not only put their life in danger, they put the lives of their loved ones in danger and they risk going to jail for a very long time. Alpo Martinez gave up 24 years of his life only to get out of jail and lose his life six years later. Big Meech got sentenced in 2008. He won't be getting out to 2028. Freeway Ricky gave up 20 years of his life. And even though Freeway Ricky is doing well financially now or to his being in the cannibal in the, being in the cannabis business man i wouldn't want to trade 20 years of my life for no amount of money so with that said folks i'm wrapping this up by saying remember life is a marathon it's not a hundred yard dash nor is it a 1600 meter sprint i'm done with it bam